a grammar lesson, namely phrase verbs. First, we need to explain what phrase verb, what a phrase verb is. A phrase verb is a verb that is made of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition. A verb A phrase verb is a verb that is made up of a preposition or an adverb or both. Uh, the meaning of a phrase verb is not clear from the uh, meanings of the individual words themselves. For example, uh, let's take the verb To look. This is the main verb. If I add a preposition like up, or I can add for, or out. So here we have three phrasal verbs. They have different meanings. And to understand them, we need to read these verbs in context. Uh, for example, here, look up. It means to search for a word in a dictionary but look for means to search for somebody or something Look out has a different meaning. It means to be careful. If you don't understand a word, you look it up in a dictionary in order to understand its meaning. You look up a word in the dictionary. When you lose something, you look for it. For example, I've lost my wallet and I'm looking for it now. I don't know where it is. I'm looking for I'm searching for it. Look out is to be careful. Imagine you're crossing the street and a car is coming. And then somebody may call, may call out for you. Hey, look out. Be careful. So uh, we can also add, you know, other other uh, prepositions and other adverbs uh, to this verb to have another uh, phrase verb. For example, uh, look for forward to. Look forward to, and it means to long for or to hope for something to happen because you know uh, it's going to be exciting. We can also add another uh, 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 particle. Uh, let's say, uh, look down on. To look down on somebody, to despise them. Uh, we can also change this with look up to and so on and so forth. So the meaning of a phrase of verb is not in the individual words that it is consisted of, but it is in the entire verb. The verb plus 
the preposition or the other. So uh, we're going to read a text. Uh, it's an email uh, written by uh, Amina to her friend uh, Jane about uh, uh, Jane's next holiday to Morocco. Dear Jane, how are you? I hope you're fine. My family and I got very excited when we knew that you will visit Morocco next August. My father insists on knowing your flight schedule so that he can pick you up when you arrive at the airport. I will do up your room because my parents have agreed to put you up in our house until your holiday in Morocco is over. Spending time with my family will help you to pick up some Moroccan, some expressions in Moroccan dialects. This way, you will find out more about the Moroccan culture. I am sure you will fall for and get along with the people here because they are friendly and hospitable. They really like to take care of their guests. I must stop now. I'm looking forward to seeing you here next August. Best wishes, Amina. As you can see, uh, the bold type words are phrasal verbs. Uh, let's deal with the uh, first exercise. Are these statements true or false? Justify. The first question. Jane will travel to Morocco by boat. So go back to the text. How are you? I hope you're fine. My family and I got very excited when we knew that you will visit Morocco next August. My father insists on knowing your flight schedule. So here we have a keyword, flight schedule. What is a flight? A flight is a journey by plane. It's a journey by plane. When you travel by plane, that's a flight. Schedule. Schedule is a program. The time when the plane arrives and leaves the airport. That's the flight schedule. So that he can pick you up from there when you arrive at the airport. So here we have airport, we have flight schedule. So the statement, Jane will travel to Morocco by boat, is false. And you can justify with the flight schedule and you arrive at the airport. Question number two. Amina and her family will host Jane. Uh, host, when you host somebody, you provide them with a place where they can stay and live for a particular period of time. For example, when I go to Marrakesh, I don't stay in a hotel. My cousin, who lives there, hosts me up, or puts me up. All right? So here, Amina and her family will host Jay. True or false? Let's go to the second paragraph. I will do up your room. This is a key uh, expression here. Because my parents have agreed to put you up in our house. So the answer is 
true because my parents have agreed to put you up in my house put you up is a phrasal verb and it means to host somebody for a particular period of time to provide them with accommodation now I'd like you to read the uh, email again and try to find phrasal verbs meaning the same as the expressions that you have there uh, for example in number one to decorate a building so that it looks better uh, for example uh, before you uh, uh, have a uh, birthday party you decorate the place where the party will take place so what phrase of verb can mean that look at paragraph number two I will do up your room very good so the verb there is do up do up when we say do up means decorate or repair a place uh, so that it looks better number two to accommodate somebody temporarily for a particular period of time so if you go back to the, the uh, uh, second paragraph again I will do up your room I will prepare your room I will repair it I will decorate it because my parents have agreed to put you up in our house so the verb there is put you up to put somebody up is to provide them with accommodation to provide them with a place where they can stay and live for a particular period of time of course number three to end and be finished again it's in paragraph number two I will do up your room because my parents have agreed to put you up in our house until your holiday in Morocco is over I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, expression when you're playing video games and then the game you know ends they say or they send you a message saying game is over means game is finished so the word there or the phrase of that is to be over when we say it's over means it's finished number four to learn a language informally informally uh, not at school uh, maybe simply by watching uh, uh, films uh, or listening to uh, songs in the target language uh, look here again it's in paragraph number two so spending time with my family will help you to pick up some expressions in Moroccan dialect it's like when a foreigner comes to uh, Morocco and stays with the Moroccan family uh, this foreigner picks up frequent expressions like uh, good morning uh, uh, you know in the uh, Moroccan uh, dialect of course like sabah khair kayf al hal they pick up these expressions because they are easy to learn and they don't go to school for that so pick up so remember to pick up a language to learn this language effortlessly you don't go to school for that simply by watching films or listening to music or communicating with native speakers uh, one more thing I'd like you to remember is that certain phrasal verbs can have a number of meanings so this is why you should pay attention to the context 
to understand the meaning of the of the of the phrase of that. Uh, for example, uh, the pen or the marker is on the floor. I'm going to pick it up. Pick it up. So pick up the marker is different from pick up a language. All right. Let's move on uh, now. Number five. To discover and learn about something that you normally didn't know about before. So let's go back to the uh, 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 email. So this way you will find out more about the Moroccan way of life. So when you pick up some Moroccan expressions you will find out more about the Moroccan way of life. You will understand more. You will know and learn more about the culture of Morocco. So here the word is find out. Find out means to discover, to learn about something. Number six, to have a friendly relationship with somebody. Let's go back to the email. This way you will find out more about the Moroccan way of life. I am sure you will fall for, you will love, you will be attracted to. You will fall for and get along with the people here. Means when you learn some Moroccan expressions and when you learn more about the Moroccan culture, you will love and you will have a good relationship with the people here. So the phrase of verb that we need here is to get along with. Get along with. So get along with means to have a good relationship with someone. With no problems, with no fightings and arguing, etc., etc. Number seven: to await something eagerly to happen, because you know it's going to be exciting, and you know you will enjoy it. Uh -huh. So let's go back to the email again. Okay. Uh, you will find out more about the Moroccan way of life. I'm sure you will fall for and get along with the people here because they are friendly and hospitable. Friendly, nice people, hospitable, welcoming. They take care of their guests. They really like to take care of their guests I must stop now. I'm looking forward to seeing you here next August. Means I am awaiting for, I am longing for. I've already written this here. Look forward to, to long for, to hope for something to happen, especially eagerly. So the answer is look forward to. Now let's move on to the next step. We're going to see some exercises to uh, uh, learn more uh, phrasal verbs and practice the ones we have seen in the uh, email. So the first exercise, you will uh, need to match the verbs in the list with their corresponding definitions. As you can see, you have a list of phrasal verbs and then you have their definitions. So number one, to take care, I'm sorry, I will start with uh, A, to search for the meaning of a word in the dictionary. To search for the meaning of a word in the dictionary. We've already seen this in the example I gave you uh, earlier. 
to look up to look up B to remove clothes when it's hot you can remove your clothes so take off C to discover a fact or a piece of information is to find out D to stop walking or functioning for a car, for a phone, a TV when it stops walking we say it breaks down it breaks down for example my phone broke down and I took it to the technicians to fix it E to reject or refuse when you refuse something or reject it you turn it down F to make a formal request you apply for G to dress oneself with a piece of clothing for example a hat or a jacket we say put on put on H to search for someone or something I already seen this in the example here to look for I to write or type information on a document in spaces that are provided for it for example in some exercises you may be required to fill in the gaps complete the gaps to fill in and the last one is to look after to look after someone is to take care of him or her to take care of next exercise you should underline the words with the correct phrasal verbs you will have sentences and then choices to choose from choose the correct phrasal verb that can be replaced with the underlined words number one before traveling to France Ali had made a request for a visa so you have A, B or C so the answer is B applied for before traveling to France Ali had applied for a visa he uh, uh, wrote an application for the visa number two we were late because our car stopped working due to a fall in the engine we had to call a mechanic to help us fix it so here it's a broke down broke down next to search for the meaning of a word in the dictionary you've already seen this here yeah it's to look up look up a word in the dictionary if you don't understand it four in Morocco it's culturally appropriate to remove your shoes no shoes when you are invited in when someone invites you in his house you should remove your shoes so here the word is take off take off in Morocco it's culturally appropriate to take off your shoes when you are invited in number four don't forget to wear your jacket it's very cold outside so the, 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 the correct option is put on don't forget to put on to wear very good next exercise and it is the last one now you're going to do the same thing but this time you have to pay attention to the changes that may you know uh, occur to the verb replace the words in brackets with a suitable phrasal verb from the list make any necessary changes so you have find out we already explained it it means 
to discover and learn about something, fill in to complete a form or a document with your information, turn down to refuse and reject, apply for uh, to, um, to make a, an official and a formal request for something. For example, you may apply for a visa, you may apply for a job, you may apply for admission in uh, 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 one of the faculties. Uh, look for to search for something. I don't know where my mobile phone is, so I'm, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for, to look for, to search. Uh, make up, make up, uh, it means uh, to uh, uh, invent something, to come up with a story. All right, let's start reading. Number one, just after graduating from university, Leila started you have search. Very good. And pay attention to the changes. Looking for. Leila started looking for a job. When she saw a job advertisement online, she immediately applied for it. However, when she got a response, she found out. She discovered. She learned that her application was, was turned down because she forgot to the application form with her information because she forgot to fill in. All right, so uh, let's move on to uh, the next exercise. Okay, as you can see, uh, you have a list of phrasal verbs. Now it's your turn. Uh, try to write your own sentences using these, these verbs. And try to look for other phrasal verbs and use them, use them in your own sentences. Thank you very much.